morning. Good morning. Um, we have some announcements. We're slowly trying to get back into the back to normal snow. Today is um, the last day for the Hope Wars. We need to turn him into Victor. We're going to make the Hope. He's on 31st. We had the church picnic yesterday. Everybody I think had a good time. So our next little food gathering is going to be on um, September 12th. That's the day Sunday school starts. And we're having a breakfast. So the breakfast will be at 8.45. And just, you know, bring your favorite dish. Or later. Or later. Yes. <laughs> She's already been texting people. You supposed to have anything in the dish? Or? What's that? <laughs> what did you say? Supposed to have anything in the dish? Who? <laughs> <laughs> August 22nd um, is the backpack blessing for the kids. Um, we're still waiting until September 12th, some ideas for the, the charge of the two churches, a name, a name idea. Fall Lay School is November 6th and 13th, and it's info in the back. And we're doing the dime challenge to help pay for the apportionment, and that's, we'll collect that on December 26th. Anybody else? On September 10th, um, it's one of the final um, Wild Things games, and Johnny's, Johnny's Johnny's going to get tickets for it. anybody who wants to go. And we hope there's fireworks that night. He's going to find that out for sure. Mm -hmm. There is? Okay, good. He found that. So if, if you want to go, let me know as soon as possible so he will know how many tickets to get for it. <coughs> Two things. Hayes will hire me two tickets. Is this soon enough? Okay. <laughs> I want to thank everyone for their hope orders. It looks like we have a decent sale again, like the last time. And I need help, the people who always help, I rely upon. So I want to thank you in advance. And it's a fun time, too, making them. It's just, it is a lot of fun. Anybody else? Then we'll do the call to worship. Let us give thanks to the Lord with all our hearts. Pray the works of our God, the one I state the land in him. The works of the Lord are faithful and just. Mighty are the precepts of our God, the lives of our land and just for us in the truth. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Blessed are the teachings of our God, the lives of our land and in all things. Come, let us worship the Lord, whose faithful love endures forever. Um, our first hymn is number 103, if you can stand, please. <laughs>
Praise the Lord. Everybody have a page? 
It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your words. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keep, keeping my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lessen your life. That ends our first reading. Elaine, I'm sorry. 
My brother, Terry, had his surgery and went well. He's still in pain and recovering, so he continues to need prayers. Um, I had two friends having surgery this week. Um, well, actually, one friend and my daughter-in-law. Uh, my friend Liz had a knee replacement surgery on Wednesday. And Friday, my daughter-in-law, Carla, is having um, a hernia repair. Also, I had some great news. Uh, last weekend, I showed at Canfield, and my one girl won. I uh, got two points, and she got injured another day. And they both behaved and did well, so that was a big bonus. All right. Congratulations on those dogs that make it their rounds. Others this morning. Jen. Um, just staff like thanks for being with everybody's working so short handed. Our girls are working extra hours with less staff than we should have, and it's just very exhausting. So just prayer for Jim to get through his week, and hopefully find some staff. And it's going to run a lot of places that way. Um, others this morning. Uh, Marty? Uh, I was traveling to Mer Mercedes uh, with Donna and Diana to Monday, tomorrow. Okay, what was that? Traveling Mercedes. Okay, I thought someone else was there, and I wanted to make sure. I'm I'm having a little trouble hearing this morning. I have a migraine, so concentrating is a little hard. So if I ask again, please uh, bear with me. Lois, this side again. Uh, my nephew had a heart attack. John Michael, and our son in Florida had a uh, virus. And that son is Bobby. Curtis, I saw your hand. Kurt, why did I say? You said Kurt. You called me. Okay. Rache Kraft. That is uh, Mia's uh, granddaughter, uh -huh. and also for Mia Schultz. Okay. Travel mercies, or is that? this Not seeing any, then let us go on to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to gather together and to share our joys and our concerns with one another. And now, Lord, we place them into your tender loving, caring arms, knowing that that is the best place we can put someone. And Lord, this morning we ask that you be with uh, Terry and Lynn as they um, will be recovering from surgeries. And Lord, we, and also for Carla as well. We just ask that you be with all the doctors and nurses that will be taking care of these individuals. And Lord, not only for the staff at Stravanian Wood, but all the places, all the nursing homes, hospitals, and all walks of life, the different um, stores and restaurants, Lord, that find themselves at difficult times with being understaffed. We don't normally think much about it, but the ones that are there, Lord, they've got to pick up the extra hours. They put the extra stress on their life. And as they may be wearing out, getting to the point where they can't take much more, we ask, Lord, that you give them the strength and the courage to continue on. And Lord, we pray for those who are in the hiring position that they are able to find qualified individuals to fill those positions so that the people that need to, that are being taken care of receive the care and the quality of care that is needed. And Lord, we pray for all those who are traveling, um, Marty and Lache and Nina. We just ask that you be with all of them, Lord. 
uh, for safe travels and journeys. And Lord, we pray for um, John who had a heart attack this last week. Lord, we pray that um, his recovery goes smoothly and without any um, ailments left behind. And Lord, we pray for Bobby who has now gotten COVID. We ask for a quick recovery and a complete one. And Lord, we pray for uh, Linda this week as well. And Lord, we pray for all those who are in our hearts and our minds that we may not have verbally spoken, but they mean just as much to us, Lord. Send an encouraging word, a smile, or a hug that will let them know that this too shall pass. And we pray all this, praying the prayer that your son taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you turn in your hymnals to number 328, and we will sing this through twice. Singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to the God, 
God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask God to bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. And if you turn in the back of your hymnal to number 881, as we prepare to affirm our beliefs by using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence we shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are able to gather together and to boldly state what it is we do believe without fear. To be able to come and read your word, hear your word, and live it. And now, Lord, we pray for words that have been prepared, that through them or in spite of them, your will will be made known. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Ever ask a child what they want for their birthday or Christmas? <laughs> I hear some chuckles. And they start listing everything they want. One year I asked my niece what she wanted, and I was emailed a 12-page document. She was only eight. She's now 21, and I don't ask. <laughs> we have all seen those movies where little Johnny or Susie is sitting on Santa's lap, and they're giving off their list that they're hoping to get for Christmas. I want a puppy, a new video game. You know the one that looks like real life, not that it looks fake? I want the cool new sneakers that light up, have wheels, tie themselves, and I never have to worry about them again in my life. We get the picture, right, folks? They want it all. So this morning when we hear God asking Solomon what he wants, did not your mind go there first? Oh no, he's going to blow up with God. He's going to ask for something silly, and God's going to have to correct him. After all, he is David's son, and look at what some of the stuff he asked for, and he did. But when Solomon asked for wisdom, did that not knock your socks off? Here is a young man just out of his teen years. And he's being asked to rule the nation. And when God, who can give him anything that he asked for, Solomon answers, he wants wisdom. So I can rule your people the right way. One translation puts it this way. Here's what I want. Give me, oh God, a listening heart so I can lead your people well, discerning the difference between good and evil. For who on their own is capable of leading your people? God's impressed by what Solomon asked for. Because most young men at this age would be seeking long life, loads of money, pretty young girls to hang off their arms and swoon over them, nice cars, Okay, in that time, a nice chariot and a great horse to pull it. But he wants to do good for God. Why can't we do the same? Every time. 
time we pray to God, we should be asking for things that is for the betterment of God's kingdom. And yes, we do do that when we ask for health and um, safety and all that stuff. That is good that we pray like that. But we need to seek the things that would help us do the things that God has called us to do. And when we share our burdens with one another, with God, but why is it sometimes when we pray by ourselves, it sounds like a shopping list. And I'm just as guilty as the next person. I've prayed prayers asking God to get me through this test or that test, asking where the money's going to come in order to pay the bills. And one time, God, why at the age of 30 am I still single? I remember making a deal with God about that last statement. Okay, God, you asked me to go to seminary. I got in. I'm here. I'm studying like crazy. And by the way, have you noticed I'm surrounded by guys and I'm still single? Okay. I've only had two dates. It's the third quarter of the year. And he wasn't even a student here, Lord. What do you want me to be, single for the rest of my life? If that's it, okay. I, I, I'll, I'm not going to sit, I'm not going to like it. And you're probably going to hear about it for the rest of, every day for the rest of my life. But if that's what you want for my life, okay. Your will be done. I think God just gave me Jim to shut me up. <laughs> but is that not what we're supposed to do? Tell him the desires of our hearts? Tell him honestly? True. We are supposed to ask for guidance and wisdom like Solomon did. We are to come to God with a pure and clean heart. And then he'll give us the desires, not that we come to him with our shopping list and think he's gonna fill it like an order form needing to be filled. When I was a teenager, my best friend Lisa and I would tell each other what we wanted and had been praying about and thinking about. And yes, to teenage girls, these do seem important. New clothes, shoes, a haircut from the cool salon in the city. And since we were turning 16, we wanted our driver's license and nice new cars to drive. We thought that praying for e these things for each other, it wasn't a shopping list <coughs> and it wasn't selfish. Because we were praying for things that we thought our friend needed. Not what we wanted. But you know what, folks? Still is selfish. Still a shopping list. I don't know about you, but when I see what God did for Solomon, I go, well, I want that. God was so pleased by the way Solomon asked for wisdom that not only did he give it to Solomon, but everything else that he ever wanted or could ever want. 1 Kings 3, 10 through 15, as we read, the Lord was so pleased that Solomon had asked for this. So God said to him, since you've asked for this and not for long life or wealth for yourself, nor have asked for the death of your enemies, but for discernment and administrating justice. I'll do what you have asked, and I will give you a wise and discerning heart, so that there will never have been anyone like you, nor will there ever be. Moreover, I will give you what you have not asked for, both wealth and honor so that in your lifetime you will have no equal among those kings. 
And if you walk in obedience to me and keep my decrees and commands, as David as your father did, I will give you a long life. That's hitting the jackpot, folks. And it also states that there's no end to what God will give us if our hearts are fixed on him. It's easy to get mixed up in things of this world, to let others make decisions for us, or to get pressured in to making those decisions. But we need to get back on track to focus on things that God wants us to focus on. This does not mean that God will give everything we ask for, but he will give us the things that we need to live a life for him. Everything that we ask for might not be the things we need, or it might not be the right time for those things to show up in our lives. Ever give a kid with the flu candy? They may think they want it, but you knowing as a loving adult that they need fluids, maybe some ginger ale or chicken broth, not a chocolate candy bar. That's how it is with us and God. We may think we need a brand new car with all the bells and whistles on it so we can better serve God. But in reality, a car that gets us from point A to point B and doesn't use too much petrol is really all that we need. We need to focus on God, not earthly possessions. Wisdom isn't just information or theological knowledge. It's a practical ability to separate right from wrong and then act on it. In our passage from Ephesians that I read this morning, we heard the word of caution for us. We are to live as wise people, making the most out of every opportunity that comes our way. Because there is evil among us, and they who are not wise will try to influence us and waste our time and our energy on things that are not important to God. And that, my friend, is sin. Anything and everything that keeps us apart from God and the things that keep us from doing His will is sin. We need to discern what is pleasing to God and what his will for us is and to keep on track. That is why it's wise for us to help us focus on what we need to be doing with and for Christ. We can't do it alone. We need each other. And that's why we need to come to church and even our fellowship times. I can't tell you how much fun I had yesterday. Um, it was good to see both churches of this charge mingling amongst each other. We even had friends of this church come. They don't come to church much often, but they come to other events. And I can't say, and I'm not going to say the girls' names, but we had a little redhead and we had a little blonde girl. They're from two different churches. And oh my, did they have a blast or what? I'm seeing the faces over here smiling. They know what we mean. I don't know who wore out who first. Because what I heard, one little girl went over this way, one went over that way. And almost simultaneously, I heard, I'm tired. Mommy, can we go home? And it was two separate mommies that they're talking to. They wore each other out, but in a good way. And they learned many different lessons. They learned they don't have to be from the same place. They don't have to look alike because they didn't. But what was cute, is, and I'm being told is very popular these days, is little girls wearing sundresses and stuff with shorts underneath them so that they can play. Both little girls had nice little dresses on. 
and they were just playing like nothing. And um, they shared. I saw one get watermelon and one get cookies, and they were swapping and um, stuff like that. Like the one had two cookies, and the one had a bowl of watermelon, and hand a cookie over, glop of watermelon. But you know, they were sharing. They were learning how to share, how to help one another in this and that, in the purest form. They didn't have anyone help. There was no one beside them telling them, oh, you need to share with her. No, they were by themselves down in that little playground. You know, on, there's that little merry-go-round thing. They were sitting there and they were sharing. They were talking to one another, getting to know all about you. And, um, you know, they were excited. And they're, you know, I heard, um, you know, I get, you know, um, one of the moms said, was asking me some questions about the other one because her daughter's pressuring her to ask the other one over for a play date. So that's great. You know, I mean, total strangers becoming total friends in about what, two to three hours? We were there, they were having a blast. And I saw old friends meet up with each other and you guys were talking and, you know, meeting new people. Um, I saw many of us talking with the people of Houston and stuff. That's great. We're getting to know one another and find, by finding out about each other, we can find out how we together can serve God. You know, that we're finding out what our likes and dislikes are. Why? Because, well, I'm not sure, but, you know, I've heard talk um, buzzing around different tables about maybe we could join up for Bible studies. Because we only have maybe like three here and three over at this church. Wouldn't it be nice to have a six-person Bible study? Well, which time works better, morning or night? Those are the things I'm here buzzing, and I'd like to hear the answers. <laughs> but, you know, and it doesn't mean that one church has to host it for the whole entire time. One month it could be at one church, one month it could be at the other church to help share, well, let's face it, the cost of electricity, you know, things like that. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. Because if you remember that old slogan, the family that prays together stays together. Well, friends, that goes for the church as well. The church that prays together and worships together stays together. And not just for us, but our community sees us. Our community says, hey, I thought they didn't like each other because there's two different churches on the same road. No, we just look a little distance, but we like each other. Hopefully we learn to love each other and we can do things together. And we still need to pray for one another. We may not know who exactly they are down at Houston, but one thing that I did forget until right now is that one of the families down in Houston does need our prayers. You know all those lovely storms we got this past week? One of our, one of the families down there, a tree fell on their house and knocked the chimney. I don't know anything more than that. But I don't know if their house is livable or not. They were waiting for, the last I heard, they were waiting for the insurance adjuster to show up that day. Um, but I haven't heard anything else. I'll get an update when I get there this um, morning. But we need to pray that everything's okay for this family. You know, because I sure hope that all it did, someone told me all it did was, with the chimney, the very top of the chimney, and knock that out. 
then the chimney might have to be redone. That's, that's not that bad, but did it hit any other place? I don't know. Um, so, you know, that's one thing we can be praying for. And just as much as we need travel mercies down here, I bet they need travel mercies up there and stuff like that. I want to see how much of us we can pray for one another through this year. Because, well, prayer moves mountains, folks. And I bet if I asked if any one of you could give me a testimony about how much prayer had a role in something in your life. You know, that you prayed for healing or you needed, um, you knew a friend who was ill. You could probably tell how much that prayer meant in that person's life. And that's what it's all about. And some people ask, well, isn't there a certain way that we need to pray? Oh, and don't we have to pray the right words in the scriptures and all this stuff? No. There is no right or wrong way to pray. If you've seen me around with my testimony tees, you've probably seen me in the one that says prayer. The world's first and greatest Wi-Fi. Or wireless connection. I have the two different ones. That's it. And all a prayer is is a conversation between you and God. No strings attached. No nothing. Just as you would talk to the person who's sitting next to you right now, it's that simple to talk to God. Yes, we've taught our children to hold their hands, bow their heads, and close their eyes. That's not bad. But there's sometimes that we can't do that. Is it wrong to sit, sit in our car as we're driving from point A to point B and pray to God? Nope. This pastor finds her, fills her prayer life very well that way. I drive my car all over the place, I'm praying. Not just many different things. Not that I just get there safely, but mostly Somebody will pop in my head and I'll pray for that person then. I might not know exactly what to pray for, but because that person crossed my mind, I pray for them. That's how simple and easy it is. Just talk to God. We don't have to say, oh, Heavenly Father, or big, flowy, fluorescent words, or King James Version words only. No. He understands, yo God, help. He understands that. Or you don't even have to say God. You just start talking and say, well, I really need some help here. And, you know, this and that, and this is going on, and I don't know what to do. He's listening. No problem. You know, sometimes us pastors say we don't get the last name or something. It just doesn't matter because God knows who we're talking about. That is one of the most truest sentences anyone could ever speak. We don't have to say a person's name. We don't have to really know too many details. If all we say is, Lord, help them, he knows who we're talking about. And he's helping. So this year, as we walk and journey together, let us honestly pray for one another and help each other along on this journey. And now, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the example of Solomon and the wisdom that he asked for. 
And Lord, we ask that you help us to be able to discern the things that come into our lives and to make wise decisions. In your holy name we pray. Amen. If you would turn in your hymnal to number 600. Jesus Christ the Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. 